Hey friends, Chris Maholka here. Recently I've had people that are fly fishers and fly tires tell me that with the last name of Maholka, I should be showing you guys how to tie Czech nymphs. Well, true, there is a castle in uh, Prague that has the Maholka name on part of it, so I'm about as Czech as you get. So today I'm going to teach you how to tie a real simple pattern to use on rivers, and it's a great one for out west. It's a Czech style tie, but it's a caddis larva. So let's get started on this. To tie this, we're going to use some 400 BL hooks. They're called a jig nymph hook. They're actually just an up eye, severe up eye, made for check nymphs. To get some weight on it and to make the bead work, we're going to use some three millimeter tungsten. This will get the fly down quick to the bottom where you want to be, and they're slotted, and that has a very important uh, function. I'll show you that here in just a moment. We're going to use some insect green. Uh, this is just a pretty much an Antron of any brand you want to get. Um, dubbing it's uh, caddis green or insect green. We use a strand or two of peacock curl. We're going to be tying with a black unithread 8 aught. The system of Czech nymphing or European nymphing as it's known everywhere is uh, that your fly is on the bottom bouncing along and you're using a very short leader that your short line and leader that you can watch the fly and the tension as it goes along the bottom to detect a strike. So the hooks are made with this bend in the shank so the eye of the hook is going to ride up basically not quite that angle but still ride up and so to get a bead on this and at that angle of a bend in the shank you have to have a slot and the slot goes in the back you put the point of the hook through the little hole in the front and slide it up and the shank then sits in the slot like that so the bead makes it around the bend at that of that angle and fits right up tight against the eye of the hook this allows you to tie a full pattern on behind it and still have that weight and it's going to be up front but it's going to let the eye ride up as it's bouncing along the stream bottom. Start the fly, we're going to start with our thread up front and we're going to wrap covering the shank of the hook back to just into the bend a little bit. Once it's covered we're going to come back up just a small amount in front of the bend and we're going to form a dubbing loop by pulling out a loop of thread and going back over it on the hook to secure the back end. This leaves us a loop of thread right there that we're going to put our dubbing in. We're on the thread back up to the front. For our dubbing, we're just going to pull out a small amount, mixed color, and we're going to just kind of spread it out so it's long and thin. We don't want this to be real fuzzy. So we're going to take this, we're going to roll it in our hand and make a little noodle out of it. So it has a taper on the front end and a taper on the back end. And if you notice, this end is thinner and it goes up to a fatter taper before it ends up here. So we're going to start, we're going to put the thinner taper in the dubbing loop first so the fly tapers from thick to, th from thin to thick on the hook shank. Then we'll take our dubbing loop, take the thin end, take our dubbing in the thin end there, and put it in the dubbing loop so it's caught in both the front and the back end of the loop, top or bottom, however you want to look at it. I'm going to spell my fingers a little bit and I'm just going to spin the thread until I get it in a nice tight little rope like that. Once that rope is twisted, we're going to grab with some hackle pliers. Anything that's lumpy or fuzzy there that is longer, we may not want in there because we want this to be a fairly tight body. Break my thread. It happens. Okay, back into my rope. And we're starting the first wrap. I'm going to take uh, with that loose material, not much thread, or not much on the thread. I'm going to go back over that and cover it up with a better loop or a better uh, amount of thread on the loop. Then I'm just going to start and work my way forward. 
and then if you get really really lucky after you judge material for a few years you'll come out really close behind the bead like that we're going to go over the thread a couple times and clip the remainder of the dubbing loop off now if you see a lot of material on there that's real fuzzy that you don't like it's too fuzzy we can just go in really easily and trim it but we don't want to trim it real tight we want to leave it a little fuzzy next we're going to take one of our pieces of peacock curl break off the real fine point to where we get down to this good fuzzy stuff and we're tied in by the tip the base of it that came off the feathers down there I'm going to tie it in by the tip because I like the way it wraps better when it's tied in by the tip it gives you more of a fuzzy type hackle then we'll take our hackle and just start and wrap it you can go back and forth over it a couple of times you want to just fill in the area behind the bead really nicely with this fuzzy material and then end right behind the bead you gotta watch because sometimes these slots on the beads can be a little sharp so I use care when you're wrapping that thread over the back of your hackle or back of your uh, peacock curl. Clip off the last of it. A couple wraps just to make sure it's secure. And I'm just going to do a couple half hitches in there. Clip the thread. Now I'm going to put a good drop of a lacquer type head cement on this because several reasons one i want to secure the thread from coming unwrapped and untied but also peacock curl can be fairly brittle so i'm just going to put a drop of lacquer on the peacock curl and the thread right in the slot there and just let that soak in and dry you won't even see it as a uh, cement on there the fly now because of the weight is going to ride on the on the leader and on the stream in the stream bottom like that line coming down to it you won't get snagged and it will be on the bottom so there you have a basic check nymph tied by a real check that will work like they're supposed to it'll bounce along the bottom it imitates a good food source for fish in any stream and this is one that i never go anywhere without so thanks for watching tie a few of these up and have a shot at it